Hey, hey everybody, this is Larry. I'm doing this poem as part of a contest, so you're gonna watch me live as I go through my thoughts as I'm coding. Uh, there'll be an explanation near the end, and for more context, there'll be a link below on the actual screencast of the contest. Uh, how did you do? Let me know how you do. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and here we go. But uh, yeah, the number of ways to wear different hats to each other. So this was a kind of a tricky problem. Um, and I refresh, and someone already submitted it. Uh, people are really good, um, but but yeah, I just didn't. Um, uh, but yeah, um, so yeah. So for this problem, I basically was like, okay. I mean, you saw me highlight the n equals ten there, so I was like, okay, there must be somewhere I could exploit n equals ten. Uh, because 10 is small enough for you to do some crazy stuff, like 10 factorial, uh, 2 to the n, or 2 to the n times n, for n is equal to 10. So I'm, in my mind, I was thinking about either some way of brute, some clever way of brute forcing it, or some way of brute forcing it with dynamic programming. Uh, so I, don't, I think at this point, um, I had some inkling, but not necessarily, um, not necessarily so that it was dynamic programming. And right now, I think I was, you can't see it on screen, but I was using the calculator app to kind of uh, test some numbers because uh, I, I think one number I was testing was what is 40 factorial over 30, or sorry, 40 choose 10, which is 40 factorial over 30 factorial over 10 factorial, which was like, I think 900 million. I, or, I said 900 million or 9 billion. I, I, I looked at it and I was like, okay, that's a little bit too much, so we can't do that. Uh, and here I'm just starting to think whether there's just, um, I don't know. I also recently, uh, I was just, uh, I think about now, I was thinking whether um, whether it could be a graph problem. Um, and I was like, okay, is there some re like graph problem analogy that I'm not thinking of? Uh, and with that, like maybe some divide and conquer or something like that. Um, and with graph theory, I was like, okay, maybe there's some like weird uh, number of paths from A to B, with, but then it ends up would have been maybe uh, a ham cycle or something like that. I don't know. Maybe there's a reduction there, but I was thinking of that because if n is equal to ten, maybe we could do something like that. And also, um, maybe. And I'm not. I'm not saying that. This was my thought. I'm not saying it was right. But my thought here was, um, you know, maybe there's some like matrix multiplication stuff like that with graphing. So I think this is when I was thinking along those lines. Uh, yeah. I'm still thinking at this point. Um, obviously, I guess because I don't know. Um, but yeah, but I I was just so I think one thing that I would do when I'm stuck is um, is uh, just generate small cases and uh, and in almost enumerate uh, every possible way to that I know that could possibly solve this problem. And with each of those possible ways, um, uh, just see if it could be right. I mean, you always saw me, lit, you know, in this uh, commentary, um, list like six different ways. Uh, and, and yeah, and six different ways. Uh, yeah, um, like, you know, all those ways, I was like, okay, no, I don't think you could do it that way. But, uh, but yeah, but I'm just still playing around with the idea. And I think one thing uh, this is, is that it is a combinatorics problem. So I was thinking, like, is there any um, combinatorics, combinatorical, combinatorical, like, uh, patterns that I could think about. This isn't exactly like a, oh, and I, here I, I saw the mod, so I was like, okay, actually just do this first, because I always forget and it end up costing me five minutes as well uh, in terms of wrong answer and penalty. So I was like, okay, just do it. Uh, and then, you know, later you can't, like, when you see me submit later, you'll see me like, oh, I have to do this thing. Uh, so so that was a great reminder. So I need, I need to keep doing this pattern where I just write it into the solution beforehand. Um,
but yeah, but now that I, I'm, I'm still a little stuck in mainly, um, just like, oh, look at that focus face. <laughs> uh, just, <laughs> uh, But yeah, but here, oh yeah, but now I was like, okay. Um, I was thinking that uh, maybe I could do some uh, dynamic programming. I was like, okay, maybe it's dynamic programming. I was trying to do a dynamic program where, okay, for, uh, for each person, um, each person, uh, it, just try all possible hats and then next person will try a different hat and so forth. Um, but then I was like, wait, Larry, that is not right at all. Yeah, after I wrote that, I was like trying to write the base case and what it means. Um, well, the base case, maybe that's right. But I, after that, I was like, no, that is still, uh, that is still 40 choose 10. All right? And you just have to choose, because the thing that would have allowed you to do this is um, it's kind of keeping track uh, of which hats are used and so forth. Uh, so if you do it this way, there's no way to track that. So, um, so that's kind of, I was like, no, Larry, you, you thought about this. We talked, like, Larry, we talked about this. Let's not try this. <laughs> uh, and then N is equal to uh, M for hats' length, uh, or number of possible different hats is 40. So I was like, no, Larry, no. We already did this math. We, did the, we broke out the calculator and everything. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm, like, thinking a little bit again. Um, and he, here I was really focused on the 40. I was thinking about two different things. One was uh, some kind of divide and count. Um, there is a, a, a crazy dynamic programming called like split in the middle or something like that, uh, or meet in the middle, where you could break things in a two to the 20, uh, a left piece and a right piece that's two to the 20. Anyway, it's not a big, it's not a, I don't, I, but that was my idea. And then like binary search the other string or something like that, or the other set. Uh, but it didn't really apply here. So maybe I'm just rambling on, but I was like, okay. And then the naive um, dynamic programming algorithm for me was like, okay. Well, how do we convert this to a uh, retained state uh, with respect to which hat was worn? Um, so, so I was like, okay, well, you just use a bit mask, right? But then with n, oh, sorry, with m is equal to forty. Well, there's two to the forty different um, bit possible bit masks with hat. That's not technically true. I think it's for uh, now that I think about it. Uh, but at the time, that was my thinking. Um, I mean, the bit mask, bit mask uh, possible states is 2 to the 40. Yeah, but technically, since you only have 10 people, uh, I guess the number of possible states will be 40 choose 10. Uh, but in any case, you would represent it that way in a bit mask. Um, and that is also one of those cases where bottom up may be a little bit expensive. You don't know what you're doing. Um, because you don't reach all the possible two to the 40 states. Uh, but then after that, I was like, wait, what if we just switch the hats and the people? Um, I, and here I was like debating name, renaming uh, these variables for index. Index and mask are terrible variable names. Uh, but I mean, I'm used to them, so I, I knew uh, how to do it. Uh, but for interview purposes or even for your own learning purposes, use better variable names. Uh, but yeah, but now I, uh, I was like, oh, wait. I could just swap the other way around, and that's what I started implementing. I was like, okay, let's try a number that's bigger than 40 because it should be okay. Um, and, and yeah, and then now I, I was going to write the transition, but I, was, I just wanted to convert uh, because each hat, each person has a hat list, you could say. Uh, I wanted to convert that from, uh, from a list to a set so I could do lookups um, easier. Um, and that's pretty much what I try to do here. Uh, and you, you could see that, like, I got this idea about a minute ago, a minute and a half ago, and I'm really cranking at full speed now. Uh, and that's the beauty of some of these dynamic program problems is that once you get it, um, you could 
type it in like two, three minutes. And uh, for this contest, I was not slick enough to be able to do that. But if I did, then it would have been amazing. But maybe next time. Um, but yeah, but now I'm just, now I can do, I, I wanted to be precise. I was like, yeah, we got to change the name to be a little bit better. But look, you're already done. Stop confusing yourself. Just do it. Uh, and also because I wanted to change something like hats, but then like hats is used all over the place. So I didn't, I was like, look, index is fine. Just get it done. Focus. Um, uh, and I said, okay, in, if, uh, if the current hat is in the lookup table, then, you know, and then now we just um, count the number of, number of uh, hats. It would have been wrong without this anyway, so I would probably have noticed. But basically, you're just saying, okay, we don't want to use this hat at all. That's what the last line is doing. And then now it's like, oh, this base case is no longer right. Uh, let's say when we reach, when we used all the hats, um, the base case is if everyone has a hat. And that's what the mask is equal to 1 to the n, or 2 to the n minus 1 is for. Uh, otherwise, it's 0 because not everyone has a hat. Um, and also, yeah. Uh, now we're just like, okay, for each, um, yeah, and also just want to double check that that person don't already have a hat. Because if that person already have a hat, then we don't count it. Uh, that's what that mask statement is for. Um, but otherwise, we just, okay, give this hat to this person. And that's as simple as this. And then now I was like, okay, let's replace the base case. Um, and then also, I was like, okay, that, this is a good reminder of the mod, because I probably would have gotten the answers right. Uh, and it still may be right, but it would maybe affect performance uh, because as you get a big int and in, uh, thing. Uh, but now you can see that, uh, yeah, and I submit a uh, number of ways to wear different hats to each other. So I was thinking about this in a number of different ways. Um, the biggest thing I was trying to think is, um, yeah, so this is a dynamic program problem. This is probably the hardest problem in the contest uh, and definitely uh, a good dynamic programming problem. Um, or like one that I haven't done in a while, so I was a little bit slower than I would have otherwise, because uh, I used to love bit mask dynamic programming. But the idea is taking advantage. When I see the ten, it jumps out at me, uh, and it should jump out at you. That means that there's some weird way to put brute force that particular piece of it. Uh, so I did some you know, uh, uh, some math on the calculator. Uh, so ten factorial is like okay. 40 choose 10 is too, way too big. So I was like, okay, that's probably not it. Um, yeah, and then the idea behind this recurrence, and it's a little bit tricky, and I, it's not a beginner's recurrence. So uh, if you're learning dynamic programming and you do not get this problem, don't feel too bad. It is a little bit hard. Um, but, uh, but yeah, but after that, um, so the recurrence is that for each hat, uh, which is the index, I, I wanted to rename it while I was writing it, but I was like, just focus on finishing it. I mean, I, we could talk about it, uh, explanation later. But for each hat, which is in my code index, uh, just try to give it to every person and then put it, and this is what the mask does, uh, which is, you know, you could use a frozen set maybe and something similar. But, beca but because this mask have a state of 2 to the 10, or 2 to the n, I guess, 2 to the n, uh, and, in the, and number of hats is, say, up to 41, um, so it's just m times 2 to the n in this case, uh, in the number of states. Um, and the algorithm checks every n, so it's m times n times 2 to the n. Uh, so that's the uh, time complexity, and the space complexity, again, is m times 2 to the n. Uh, the idea is that for each hat, if the, I mean, you could, this is actually maybe not even necessary, but, uh, but for each hat, if, if the person uh, can wear the hat, um, and the person doesn't already have a hat, well, just give them the hat. Give them that numbered hat, and yeah, and then set it, and then, you know, you do count, and then you do a mod, you know, do the mod, because, well, that's the problem. Um, and, and yeah, I might do a little bit, uh, so that I did a little bit pre-processing to put things in a set, so that this is more efficient. Uh, and the other thing is the base case. Well, if the index is at, Let's say we, so index is equal to m, where m is 41, which is, you know, given that m and it's at, at most 40. Uh, so we've given out all the hats. If, if everyone has a hat, we return that as a good result. If not everyone has a hat, we turn zero. So 
So that's kind of this problem. This is a very interesting problem, very cute problem. I haven't seen, like I've seen a similar problem, but I haven't seen it in a while. So it, it, it took me a little bit to think about uh, different ways to think about it. And th dynamic program problem is hard in general. Uh, so what I was doing while I was just thinking about it, like I was just trying to play around with di different ideas to kind of figure out, uh, is it this, like I, I had a sense that was dynamic programming, uh, and I was just trying to figure out that, because hat's length is also 40, which is cute in a way, because uh, because I was thinking maybe there's something we could do with the 40 instead. If this, because this could actually easily be way bigger and it'll be okay for this problem, but if it was like, I don't know, 200, you'll be like, okay, we can't actually brute force that. So that would actually, in theory, make the problem easier because it eliminate some possible states. So I thought that was kind of interesting in that way. But because it was 40, I thought maybe I could do some uh, divide in the middle, like 2 to the 20 times binary search or something. It's, it's not the case, but that was the idea that I was thinking. And I was thinking about along those lines of how to get this 40 to maybe a 20 or a 10 or something like that, so that we can do something crazy in brute force and then do some uh, 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 merging a la divide and conquer or something. That was what I was uh, trying to go through for about five minutes. But after I saw this, like, uh, but after I was like, oh, yeah, you chat once at a time, then, you know, you, if you watch the tape again, you see that light turned on, so to speak, and then you saw me solve it in like five, like less than three to five minutes. I don't remember the timing. But yeah, overall, um, yeah, a fun problem. Uh, definitely, uh, it's a little hard for interviews, but for contests, it is fun. Uh,